Did you know? The development studio that created Pokemon, Game Freak, originally began as a self-published gaming fan magazine in 1981. Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of Pokemon, wrote the magazine by hand at the age of 17. Tajiri sold hand-stapled photocopies in small shops for the equivalent of about $3 each. Today, original issues of Game Freak magazine can fetch over $75 a piece. Over time, Tajiri attracted new contributors to his fan magazine, including Ken Sugimori, who would later become the art director for Pokemon. Game Freak was converted into a full-fledged game development studio after the staff grew frustrated with the lack of quality games to write about. They felt they understood what separated a good game from a bad game, and decided to put that feeling to the test. It goes without saying that their efforts paid off. Satoshi Tajiri developed the concept for Pokemon by combining his childhood interests. One of these interests was insect collecting, and he would often compete with his friends to see who could gather the most insects. This went on to influence the collection aspect of the Pokemon series. In an interview with Time Magazine, Tajiri stated, Places to catch insects are rare because of urbanization. Kids play inside their homes now, and a lot had forgotten about catching insects. So had I. When I was making games, something clicked, and I decided to make a game with that concept. Everything I did as a kid is kind of rolled into one. That's what Pokemon is. Playing video games, watching TV, Ultraman with his capsule monsters, they all became ingredients for the game. Ultraman is a major pop icon in Japan from the 1960s. In the television show Ultra 7, when the hero was unable to fight, he would summon monsters from special capsules to fight for him. This idea went on to be the impetus behind Pokemon and the Pokeball item. Pokemon also found inspiration in the Dragon Quest series of games. Dragon Quest V was the first game to popularize catching monsters and using them for battle. Even though this mechanic is similar to the fundamentals of Pokemon, this particular concept isn't the catalyst we're referring to. Before Pokemon even had a name, Tajiri would play Dragon Quest II. One of the equipable hats in the game had a particularly rare chance of appearing after defeating an enemy, and it was very hard to obtain. Tajiri was never lucky enough to find the hat, but his friend and colleague Ken Sugimori was fortunate enough to have two of them. Tajiri's desire to own the hat made him consider the possibilities of trading goods between friends on the Game Boy's link cable. And and ultimately, leading to the idea of trading unique and rare Pokémon. It even impacted the designs of Pokémon, spearheading the design philosophy of what kind of Pokémon would I want to trade? Game Freak made six games before releasing Pokémon in Japan, and some of these games are referenced within the Pokémon series. The cruise ship in the Kanto region, the SS Anne, is known in Japan as the Saint Anne. This is the same name as the computer Pulsewain was birthed from in the 1994 Sega Genesis game of the same name. Pikachu's signature attack from the third generation, Volt Tackle, is known as Volt Tesser in Japan. This is thought to be another reference to Pulseman, given it has the same name as one of Pulseman's attacks. It's also possible that both Pulseman and Pikachu's attack are in reference to the 1975 anime Man, whose most powerful attack is an electric beam called Volt Tekka. Ruby and Sapphire have another reference to a past Game Freak game, this time hidden within the data of the game. There's a fully animated overworld of an enemy from Mendel's Palace, which was possibly used to test the Game Boy Advance Pokemon engine. Homages to past games by the developers can also be found in the music of Pokemon. Diamond and Pearl's rival battle theme for Barry contains an interlude with the exact same notes as a segment from the Neo Tokyo theme from Pulseman. In Pokemon Red and Blue, the track that plays on Route 24 and 25 sounds incredibly similar to the Sky theme from Mario & Wario, another Game Freak title. Again in Red and Blue, the background music for the Indigo Plateau sounds very similar to the music from Mount Toei, from the NES predecessor to Earthbound, Mother. The Earthbound, or Mother series, wasn't created by Game Freak, but the series does have a direct connection to Pokemon. The other developer listed in the credits for Pokemon, Creatures Incorporated, was originally formed as Ape Inc., which developed both Mother and Earthbound. The influence of Earthbound can be found all over Pokemon. Perhaps the most striking similarity is between Mewtwo and the main villain of Mother, Gigas. Both have slender, alien-like forms, and both use psychic powers to fight. Here's an interesting theory. Early in the game, it's possible to capture Caterpie and Weedle, two Pokemon with evolutionary lines that are very similar. However, in one of these lines, there's much more physical variation between the second and third stages, Metapod to Butterfree, than there is with the transition from Kakuna to Beedrill. This has led some to believe that the design for the final stage of the Caterpie line was swapped with another design, Venomoth. In the real world, moth larvae are also called caterpillars, and in Pokemon, Venomoth shares a few design traits with Caterpie. They both have horn-like structures on their head and have similar eyes, 
Additionally, Butterfree shares more traits with Venonat than it does with Caterpie. Both have three-digit hands, a round snout with two teeth, antenna, and red compound eyes. Another theory points out the possible mislabeling of badge names between the gyms in Saffron City and Fuchsia City. Sabrina, the Psychic-type trainer, gives out a Marsh badge, and Koga, the Poison-type trainer, gives out a Soul badge. But if names were the only factor, it would make more sense for Koga to give out the Marsh badge and Sabrina to give out the Soul badge. Souls can be considered part of the metaphysical theme of Psychic Types, and Koga's gym is in the same town as the Safari Zone, where there are wetland-like areas. In Japanese, the names of the badges don't have special themes. They're simply named after colors, just like the naming convention of the towns. So it's likely if the names of Soul and Marsh were switched, it would have happened during the translation process. The rainbow badge from the grass-type gym in Celadon City is also a strange outlier. Some speculate that the rainbow badge was somehow swapped with the Earth badge, which graphically appears as a leaf. But the confusion is cleared up by looking at the original Japanese names. Celadon City is known as Tamamushi City in Japan. This name refers to the iridescent colors of the jewel beetle, which explains the origins of the rainbow badge in the green-themed town. The English language name for the town, Celadon, lacks the same connotation, but the word Celadon does have two meanings. It's the name for a shade of green, and it also refers to a type of glaze in ceramics. This may have been chosen during localization as a rough approximation of the iridescent quality embedded in the language for the Japanese name. Viridian City is known as Tokiwa City in Japanese, which, like Viridian, is a shade of green. It's most likely named after green because of the nearby forest, and the Earth Badge's leaf shape may also be in reference to the Viridian Forest. Thank you for watching, and if you like my voice, you can find more of it on my channel, where I make lots of Pokemon videos twice a week, and I cover the development of the Pokemon games in more depth, as well as looking into beta elements that are left over on the ROMs for the games. This week, I have a video all about the glitches you can find in the Generation 2 games, so if you're interested, you can click here to check it out. And don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming for more fact videos. See ya!